Hey guys, what's going on? It is Ash here coming at you today in Clash Royale. Today I'm joined by first time guest, Monkeys. He's going to be pushing to number one in the world. As you can see, he's currently number seven, but he needs about 120, 130 trophies to actually get there. There's needless to say, there's going to be a lot of editing, but you can see this guy's profile. He is an absolute beast. We're going to go ahead and jump into the first match and I will edit out and see you guys when we get there. Before we get to the ladder push, guys, a big shout out to Amazon. That's today's video sponsor. Now is a great time to play Clash of Clans on Amazon App Store. That's right, the game that started it all here on the channel. On Amazon, you can play Clash on your Fire HD tablet or your Android device with the Amazon App Store for Android. As you know, Clash has some awesome in-game deals happening right now, and to sweeten the deal, Amazon is offering an additional promotion exclusive to Amazon App Store customers. Right now, when you buy any $19.99 in-game item, you'll get an extra $10 credit to spend in Clash of Clans. This offer is open to all customers on Amazon App Store, plus new customers will receive a bonus 500 Amazon Coins. Amazon Coins are Amazon's App Store virtual currency that will allow you to save up to 20% on in-game purchases right off the bat. Anyways, back to the good part, if you combine the offer with the other great in-game deals, you'll be unbeatable. Don't forget to tell your clan members and let them know. Trust me, they'll thank you. Follow the link down below to download Clash of Clans on Amazon and get this awesome limited time offer. And before you download, don't forget to sync your Supercell accounts so you don't lose any progress. Back to the video. All right, guys, so going into the first match, I think it's crazy that Monkeys is only 12 years old. I don't know why, but somehow it makes me feel bad. I guess I like to use my age as an excuse as to why I'm not good at the game, right? And Monkeys definitely makes that re uh, that case in kind of reverse, right? The youngest player that I've ever had on the channel, obviously not a voice interview. I would want to make sure I get like parents permission and stuff like that. So I decide to let him concentrate on trophy pushing and I'll go ahead and do some play by play. It looks like we're going against a Lava Hound deck, Lava Miner or Lava Loon uh, in the first match here. We're going to be rooting for him to get number one global I have like two hours to record right now and knowing the downtime of some of these uh, the search time excuse me for some of these matches definitely uh, a little worried that I might not have enough time even assuming he's able to win all of these matches and a really rough start there losing his right tower to that lava loon push sorry about the flicker on the uh, the gameplay there early on I fixed my connection so we should be good but anyway it's gonna be a counter-attack here with a lumberjack and a raged up baby dragon but not much to come out of it here uh, 2,627 damage remaining on that right tower. Now, this is not a new deck that I'm sharing with you guys right now, the Monkeys deck. However, the way that Monkeys plays this deck is especially why I want to get him on the channel. Regardless of the live trophy pushing on the top of ladder, I really wanted to share with you guys that he is the most aggressive golem player I've ever seen. And a special or, or a different kind of aggressiveness rather than just being aggressive with his golem and his cards he's actually out of all the golem players that I've had on the channel namely Flobby and Royal many times monkeys actually is totally willing to sacrifice towers early on I've seen a bunch of his live matches now he's been in the clan for a couple days and I've noticed that almost more often than not if he doesn't have a good answer or he thinks he has an answer but but he you know he'd rather save the elixir and devote it to a big golem push he'll just let a tower go even early on in the match is definitely a different style of golem play but it really works out for him and that's really the only difference to my untrained eye that i've been able to notice between him and the tra traditional golem players again like royal and flobby at the top of ladder so here we go it's going to be a little bit of a golem night witch push here. Poison comes down, keeping that Night Witch alive, but he's got some problems on the King Tower. Actually, a very nice defense with the Baby Dragon and the Mega Minion there, of course, utilizing that Tornado as well. And just like that, guys, after losing that tower early on, he is right back in the driver's seat here. He has one Barbarian and Night Witch coming in. He has that Baby Dragon right there in the pocket. Can the Baby Dragon connect with the tower? Not right away, but it did clean up all of those minions from that Minion Horde and take the left tower down to 445. 
Monkeys gives the GG. Nice defense. Nice come from behind victory against Lava Loon. If you guys want a good template on how to handle a Lava Loon matchup being a golem player, certainly go ahead and rewatch this match and try to follow the habits of Monkeys. Let's go ahead and edit out incoming uh, with match number two, guys. All right, guys, into the next match here. He picked up about 30 trophies or so, 29, I believe, which is actually a lot in this range of ladder right now because sometimes if you match up with someone who's like two or you know, two, 150th in the world, uh, you'll stand to lose like 45 trophies and only gain like 15. So anyway, here we go. Uh, kind of a stalemate to start this match. A Abe or Abby is going to start out with a bandit behind the king tower, and Monkeys is going to respond with a night witch of his own here. Let's see what else he does a golem right off the bat there as soon as he saw that barb hut placed he figured you know what? i don't want to sacrifice this night witch i think he probably already planned on dropping that golem so now it's a golem push here he has poison he has enough elixir to play poison this is potentially good poison value if he has it in hand and obviously he does that's a great poison they're going to take down the flying machine take down that along with the golem death damage and actually this push is still alive ladies and gentlemen here comes a lumberjack as well and you can see how monkey's kind of he holds back on the lumberjack especially in single elixir time ways to see okay is this push going to result in the golem getting to the tower or the golemites getting to the tower in this case it did he takes that tower all the way down to 360 damage 360 hp and look at that again just takes the bandit charge opts to go ahead and nato and activate his king tower a great decision there by monkeys obviously activating a king tower any deck that you're playing nato is very important and the new card by the way the ram rider can also be one of those king tower activation cards so here comes the flying machine in the left lane flying machine coming down we're going to respond with a night witch perfectly timed night witch there it's going to allow those bats to creep up in front of that princess tower the flying machine does lock onto the tower but as long as it keeps that night witch alive that's really the important thing that was very actually well played there by monkeys again i can't believe this guy is only 12 years old it just it's it, it makes me feel bad guys so here it goes it's gonna be another point another poison value but uh to abe's credit or abby i don't even know how to say the name but to their credit that was the right play to drop the three musketeers there otherwise they could have potentially gotten three crown there so here it comes a bandit battle ram in the left lane we're gonna go ahead and defend with the lumberjack and the battle ram and then the mega minion on that flying machine that's a nice solid defense there bats actually come down though a little bit of pressure here but the activated king tower is really going to come in clutch and now here we go with the golem with 26 seconds left 25 seconds left it looks like he's going to sacrifice the left tower here and we talked about this guys more than happy to sacrifice towers even with 20 15 seconds left in the match he knows it's probably going to be a two or a three tower gain he's perfectly fine doing so so there's the baby dragon there's the three musketeers we've got to be on the lookout for this we have a bar barrel we have baby dragon okay everything looks to be okay here and we do end up defending taking about half of it, maybe about two-third hp off of that king tower but there it is poison down he gives the good game that's two in a row for monkeys let's go ahead and hop into match number three can he get three in a row i think it would take like four or five in a row to get number one guys all right guys next match is here against nina from nova brazil let's see I want to say, I don't, uh, I could be wrong, but I want to say they play uh, bait, and, and seeing the uh, Goblin Gang off the bat there, and look at that, as soon as, okay, I was wrong, it's not, it, it might be a Zap Bait, maybe a Mega Knight uh, deck, we'll see. But he's going in hard on the left lane here. Monkeys drop that early golem. And usually if the opponent starts out with a three elixir play and it's not incredibly lethal like a charging bandit right at the bridge, uh, oftentimes monkeys will just take the damage and then, uh, it, you know, either ignore the play and drop that golem and if they keep supplementing that push he'll sacrifice the tower we talked about that and it looks like he probably has a good defense here there's that mega knight we called it there so it's a mega knight minor zap bait deck with the inferno dragon also potentially uh bait out that zap nice nato in there by monkeys it's gonna get a lot of damage with that barbarian and the baby dragon we don't take the tower down 
but very close to tower trading early on here. And remember, we do have poison in this deck, so we do have that big uh, direct damage spell as well. So let's see how Monkey plays this about halfway through regulation in 10 seconds or so. Is he going to start with a golem? He usually doesn't... Okay, yeah, he, I was going to say, he usually doesn't hesitate to drop that golem if he has the elixir advantage. And of course, he does so here. So a big push from the opponent. Skeleton Barrel, a goblin gang at the bridge. Baby Dragon is going to clean up that very nicely. He's okay with taking a few hundred damage off of that right tower. He could feasibly even three crown the opponent in double elixir time. Here he goes. He knows the Inferno Dragon is in a cycle. It looks like he's potentially going for a little bit of a three crown push here. Spirit Goblins are going to kite that Mega Minion away, and there is the Inferno Dragon to intercept that Golem. That was well played there because the uh, Mega Minion was not able to counter or do any damage to that Inferno Dragon. So this one could be tricky here. Let's see how the opponent plays this. We go in just cycling a Bar Barrel in the left, and then we play again that Golem Night Witch combo right into the incoming uh, Mega Knight and the Inferno Dragon. And here are the bats as well. A lot of spam coming through. We have the Skeleton Barrel. We have the bats. We get the Mega Knight, the Inferno Dragon, the Spear Goblins in the back. However, the Golem does a good, a good job just biding time here for the Mega Minion, the uh, Baby Dragon, and of course... What else did he have? The bats. The bats from the Night Witch. Uh, just doing some work there. So he's going to do the same move he does. This time we have another Golem played into another Inferno Dragon and Mega Knight combo. What is he going to switch up here? This is a little bit more difficult. The opponent coming in at the in the pocket here. He's going to go ahead and NATO everything up. But he misses the Skeletons. It's okay because the Baby Dragon is going to clean up nicely. However, some Skeleton RNG does get to that tower. So things are not looking that great here at this point for Monkeys. Is he going to go in for the three crown push? Well, he's doing something. He has the Lumberjack on that left tower. That's going to help out. Bats answering that Lumberjack. Now we have a Golem in the pocket here. Baby Dragon takes a reverse turn, takes care of those Bats that were eating away at that Golem. Now we have a ranged up Golem onto the tower. That's going to do an incredible amount of damage here, guys. 1225, 849, Skeleton Barrel in the pocket for the opponent. 473, death damage goes down. 97 HP, that's GG. Wow, the raged up golem in the pocket. Golem's like, I got this, guys. I got this. That was a very smart lumberjack played ahead of time for him to die and then have that raged golem in the pocket. Very well done there. Let's go into the next match. Alright guys, here we go. This is going to be very important. It's KK19212 in the clan. Not draw. That means no draws. Coming in with a Goblin Barrel right off the bat here. We're going to answer with a Baby Dragon. This is a very important match. I just checked the, checked the cups. I meant to check uh, in the downtime between matches. I apologize, guys. The downtime has been pretty excruciating, <laughs> to be honest with you guys. It's been about 20 minutes waiting on that last match. And then 15 minutes the match before in real time here. We go ahead and we place that golem knowing that the opponent has already played, what, 12 elixir worth of cards to our 8 elixir worth of cards. So we had a 4 elixir advantage. He's going in with the golem with that healthy elixir advantage. He did take some tower damage. Let's see if he's able to come across with any uh, decent damage onto the opponent's princess tower. Here goes that bar barrel is going to intercept those girl rascals. One girl still stays alive, but the mega, or excuse me, the mega minion and the lumberjack take care of that prince. That was important. And now we NATO everything together. Dark Goblin is down. Now we have a Rage Up Mega Minion on that tower. And just like that, that might be, it might be, it could be. It is towered down for monkeys. Man, I'm excited. He might get number one, depending on how high KK19212 is in trophies. If he can win this match, he could potentially get number one on this match. And this is a move that I've seen him do time and time again, guys. Another pro tip for you guys to kind of pay attention to when you're playing a golem deck. They come with a big ground assault. It doesn't have to be a prince. It could be anything, really. It could be a, a Valkyrie and a Goblin Gang. It doesn't matter. If they pressure you when you have one tower already down, he'll oftentimes just place that golem opposite lane, especially if they commit a lot of elixir. In that case, the opponent had to use rascals and that prince, that surviving prince. So that was 10 elixir right there. And we were able to circumvent that just by playing the golem opposite lane and kiting, using the golem in a way that you traditionally maybe use an ice golem. And we're gonna do it again right here, perfect. And the predictive log did not land by the opponent. I don't know what they thought, maybe a lumberjack there, but either way, it works out just beautifully here. Now we have a night witch as well and a golem. Poison comes down. Uh, how is he gonna deal with this though? We have a dark goblin prince. 
A Lumberjack on a, a beautiful Lumberjack there. Nice decision making. That Rage again is going to benefit that Night Witch, allow her to be able to solo 1v1 that Prince. That was a really, really nice play there again with the Lumberjack towards the end of this match. Notice the two Lumberjack uses in this match to close things out, hopefully. And in the last match, that was just brilliantly done there by Monkeys. So guys, I will check the trophies and potentially he could... He, he could be number one right now depending on how much he gained there. Let's go ahead and see if he was able to get it, guys. Whoa! All right, guys. So here's the deal. It's the next day. I'm coming from you. I'm coming at you from the next day. And monkeys, actually, we waited an hour and ten minutes at the office. No luck, no dice, no matches whatsoever. So he couldn't battle to get number one. He needed four trophies to get there. Wasn't the case. However, he did get it after I stopped recording, unfortunately, at some point during the evening. So he came back and he shared the replay that got him to number one in the world using this deck. So I wanted to share that with you guys right now to conclude this video. So this might mark the first time that I've ever done a first half of the video on one day and then the second half of the video on another day. Either way, he's facing a Hog Mini P.E.K.K.A. Freeze Princess deck. It's kind of like the simple deck that I shared here about a month or two ago. Nice baby dragon getting that last fiery breath on that princess, right? But it, it, as I was saying, it's very similar to that deck that I shared recently. And check this out here in the right lane. He comes in very aggressive. We go in with the barbarian barrel. And then I think it's this push, or maybe it's the next one. It's the next push, it looks like, but he's going to sacrifice a tower again. Spoiler alert for you guys. So it's going to be a, uh, a princess in the opposite lane, Mini P.E.K.K.A. on that golem. Of course, Bat's doing a pretty good job until the princess takes care of them, so Monkey's opts to go ahead and just poison out that princess. Now he has a real a good situation for himself. The Ice Golem does block that Night Witch, but Night Witch is putting in some work. It was a nice NATO, but a better Goblin Gang by the opponent, able to kind of mitigate the harm done to that tower, keeping it to 25 31 hp so kenshi at this point i think it's this next push i think monkey's gonna go ahead and drop the golem and you can see the elixir he has basically like a 0.75 or a one elixir lead at this point and i bet monkeys knows it so he opts to go super aggressive here is that's something that he does often right so as soon as he drops that golem kenshi's like okay i'm going in mini pekka and hog rider we go in with a bar barrel there but the freeze comes down and Probably an overcommitment. I don't think Monkeys would have defended at that point anyway, but either way, he does lose his right tower. But now, how is he going to defend this push? Well, it's going to be a princess opposite lane. Check this out. I think he pulls that princess in instead of poisoning. What a, a beautiful decision there. Instead of wasting the poison, now he has poison. He can use it against the Dark Goblin. I think he ends up using it, but I don't think he even needed it, honestly, guys. Because the Baby Dragon would have taken down that tower either way. So maybe even a little bit of an overcommitment there, taking that tower down. But, you know, Monkeys is going for first place in the world. You can tell he probably just wanted to make sure, hey, there's only 30 seconds or whatever there was left in the match. I just want to make sure I get this tower down. And he did a good job of that. So now we have that Bar Barrel, and the Mega Minion is going to finish off that Mini P.E.K.K.A. just barely. We do have a Goblin kind of chipping away along with that Hog Rider in tandem on our left tower here. So things are not looking that great here. Check this out. Beautiful play. Pulls that Hog Rider away with the NATO with a high Lumberjack, able to evade that freeze. And boom, we got the Golem and the Night Witch on that tower. A Night Witch in the pocket just in case to defend as well from the Mini P.E.K.K.A. Very well played, and that's what got Monkeys the first place, first player this season to hit Ultimate Champions League. Really happy to have Monkeys on the channel. Big shout out to him for doing this, which I don't think anybody has done before. Shout out to Trainer Guard too. He's another 12 uh, year old pro who I've had on a lot of my streams. I just want to give those two guys some love. Really, really fantastic gameplay, and I hope you guys learned a thing or two about the way that Monkeys uses the Golem uh, just so aggressive and how much he's willing to use his Princess Towers as a resource. So check out his player stats and profile in the description below, thanks to StatsReal.com. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really, really appreciate it. All the way till the end, you shout out to Bren Chong, my YouTube partner. Check out his information as well. Thank you, and as always, take care, guys.